Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie on Monday, February the 19th, 2024. So a few days ago, uh, Alexei Navalny died in prison. Um, I did look at his horoscope uh, in August. Of course, I didn't think that the outlook looked particularly positive for him, but I suppose you didn't really need astrology to know that. Uh, uh, Once you've been sentenced to a long period in a Russian prison, um, things don't look very positive, do they? Um, Still, um, I did want to have another look at his chart and perhaps look at what was going on um, when when he died. Uh, you know, were there any transits, solar arc directions, look at his solar return? Um, I think that's something that was important to, important to do. Now, when we look at uh, Alexei Navalny, um, you know, it's easy to think that, uh, you know, Russia is uniquely evil. Uh, uniquely horrible um, that in the West, you know, we don't do things like that, you know, but we, you know, we should not forget um, that Julian Assange um, has been in prison for years and years um, in the UK um, under immediate risk of being extradited to the US. Um, Now, he is not facing quite the kind of dangers that uh, Alexei Navalny was, um but uh he is certainly a political prisoner um he is in prison because the us uh, didn't like the fact that he was leaking information and putting it into the public domain um and they appear to want to get him um now he wasn't he didn't betray any organization he was working for he wasn't a member of the security services uh he was just a private individual obviously he had wikileaks um but he is certainly a a political prisoner um and you know okay alexei navalny died but you know that is not a unique situation um in ukraine um the independent journalist um Gonzalo Lira, the American and Chilean citizen who had been um, vlogging from Kharkov or Kharkiv in eastern Ukraine. Um, Now, that might have been a fairly reckless thing to be doing, um, particularly if your vlogs were tended to be anti-Ukrainian and anti-Ukraine and pro-Russia. Yeah, that was certainly reckless. Um, So uh, the Ukrainians could have just deported him. but no, they put him in prison and uh, he was, by all accounts, was denied proper medical care. And um, like Navalny, um, he died in prison. And, uh, you know, of course, the West is supporting Ukraine and saying it's a fight against fight for democracy and all of this kind of thing. Um, so I think it's important that we don't have um, double standards. I'm not going to spend any real time looking at Gonzalo Lira's chart. Um, I'm going to allude to it, but because that, because I did a video pretty recently um, when I looked at his horoscope. Um, now I'm going to take this opportunity to look at the look at the charts of um, two other people uh, who were killed supposedly by um, um, either the well, in one case by allegedly by um, Russia uh, agents of Russia. Uh, another another case of someone who was who was um, under, who was killed um, by probably by an agent of the Bulgarian government um, under under the old under the old communist system. Um, so those the you know the the person who died died in two thousand and six um, was uh, Alexander Litvinenko, and I do want to look at his horoscope. Um, so Alexander Litvinenko was um, a member of the FSB. You know that in that's the Russian successor organization of the KGB, um, and he kind of defected uh, in the in, to the UK. Now, if you are an agent of FSB and the or, or, or the KGB, and you you defect. Um, you have to be really careful um, because they'll get you. 
um, they, they don't appreciate it when their when their um, agents defect to the West. Um, your normal life would come to an end. But he, I think Alexander Litvinenko, possibly pretended uh, tried to you know just behaved as normal and was a bit uh, careless in terms of his security arrangements. Um, and uh, yes, he was poisoned in 2006 uh, with a radioactive substance, polonium-210, and uh, he died a really horrific and lingering death. Now, we don't know for sure uh, who you know, the particular process of, of, his, of his killing, I mean, who ordered it. Um, it's very strange that he was killed with polonium-210. This is not a substance you can get in large quantities just you know, in an ordinary way, sure, you can get small amounts of plutonium, of polonium-210. I think it's an anti-static device. Um, you can, if you want, as I believe as a member of public, you can still, the public still get it, but I don't think you can get it in large enough quantities um, where you can kill someone um, in an acute way, um, like, with, like happened with Alexander Litvinenko. You would have probably had to have got it from a nuclear establishment. Um, so yes, I do want to look at his chart and what was going on um, when he when he died. I mean, no, actually, Litvinenko. I, I mean, with Litvinenko, I kind of just want to look at his horoscope. I don't really want to spend a great deal of time on his chart. Um, uh, someone else who ki who died under mysterious circumstances was Georgi Markov. Um, Georgi Markov was a Bulgarian dissident who. Um, he defected. He was working in London, and um, in 1978, he got stabbed with an umbrella. Um, I think while he was trying to catch a bus, and um, that, in, that umbrella injected a tiny steel ball into his leg, um, which contained ricin, which is a highly toxic alkaloid derived from, I believe, castor oil, castor oil seeds. And he died a few days later. And so I do want to look at the horoscope of um, Georgi Markov and um, you know what was going on um, when he died. But first of all, I want to look at the astrology and the I Ching for today, which is Monday, February the 19th, um, 2024. So top Right, I've got a few pictures there. Top left, you know, the, if you look at the four pictures, top left, that is Gonzalo Lira. Uh, I'm not really going to be spending any time on his chart. Uh, top right, that is, um, that's Navalny. Bottom left, that is um, Alexander Litvinenko. And bottom right is Georgi Markov, the, the Bulgarian dissident who um, was murdered, assassinated, however you want to put it. Um, in September 1978. So what's happening today? Today, uh, the sun is in Pisces. Uh, the sun um, moved into Pisces um, at 4.13 uh, a.m. Uh, London time on Monday. Uh, so this chart, by the way, is the chart for Monday, set for noon in New York. Um, so so if you're in, you know, Europe, uh, Africa, uh, the Middle East, you know, pretty much, you, you you know, by the morning, the sun is in Pisces. Uh, if you're in the Americas, the sun went into Pisces um, last night. Um, the moon also today uh, moves into Cancer. Uh, it moves into Cancer at 3.25 a.m., you know, just before the sun moves into Pisces. Um about 3.25 a.m. London time. So, yeah, if you're in the Americas, the moon went into cancer last night. Um, uh, if you're in Australia, New Zealand, then, yeah, the, the moon won't go into can cancer until until the afternoon. Likewise, it won't, the sun won't go into, go into Pisces until the afternoon. So it kind of depends on your time zone a bit, but I think we can by a large say but for most of us, for most of the day, uh, the sun is going to be in Pisces and the moon is going to be in Cancer. And, uh, you know, this is reflected in the chart um, for what's happening today. You can see there's the sun in Pisces, there's the moon in Cancer. Um, now, it's a big change. Um, you know, we had a lot of planets in air. 
Uh, over the weekend, we had um, five planets in air signs. We had Pluto, Venus, Mars, Mercury, and the Sun. Yes, I know the Sun is a satellite technically, but uh, we, I'm treating it as a planet. Uh, uh, likewise, the moon was in Gemini. So there was a big build-up in air signs. Um, air signs are about ideas, um, uh, approaching problems through thinking rather than feeling. Um, perhaps feeling we have to talk things through. Uh, but still, there was a lot of stubbornness there because we had five planets in Aquarius. Aquarius is a fixed sign. So yes, we might be into thinking but we might also have ideas that we're really holding on to so with the sun moving into pisces that creates a little bit more fluidity a little bit more flow um, also with the moon moving into cancer you know the moment the moon moves into cancer pretty much uh, it is making a trine to the sun you know in water signs and so when you've got the sun and the moon um, in a trine aspect, um, that is by and large fortunate. Um, you know, traditionally, the sun and the moon are the most important bodies in the sky. Um, when they're in trine, when they're in the same element, um, but different signs, um, it, it, it represents a certain cosmic harmony. I mean, the sun is a sort of archetypal masculine positive influence. Um, the moon is an archetypal feminine negative influence. Remember, by negative, I'm not talking about negative. I'm talking about negative as in sort of dark and sort of nocturnal, um, that kind of negative. Um, so, yes, the sun and the moon have a, have a good, healthy relationship. And so that may help foster harmony, whatever our star sign today it could there could be a general sense of harmony and well-being um now uh the 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 moon um is making a trine aspect of a sat to saturn and it's making a sextile aspect to jupiter which i think makes things even easier sun trine saturn is about creating stability without having to be restrictive, without having to tell people what to do. There's a general desire for stability. It means that, you know, emotions may not get out, get out of control. Um, you know, people can behave with a certain amount of responsibility without feeling restricted. Um, and then you've got the moon making a sextile to Jupiter. Um, that is entirely fortunate. Um, the moon and Jupiter are in mutual reception by exaltation. Um, so, you know, the moon in Cancer, moon is in Jupiter's exaltation. Uh, Jupiter in Taurus is in the moon's exaltation. So, for hence, moon, Jupiter, uh, mutual reception by exaltation. Um, it's a time when um, things, things run well. And for many of us, it might be a, a good time to be starting something. Um, because if something starts with a moon sextile, moon sextile Jupiter, uh, things should, could bode well. And also um, looking at the relationship between the sun and the moon, the moon is waxing. Um, so you know, when the, in the waxing stage of, of the moon, when the moon is getting larger in the sky, um it tends to be tends to be fortunate particularly when the moon um is trine the sun so if we just look at the, that broad signature sun sun in pisces um aspected by the moon in cancer moon making a sextile to jupiter moon trine saturn that that's that's pretty good um that's a good foundation for the day um if there is a problem, I suppose I have to mention that the sun is um, on the um, Mars-Neptune midpoint. Um, you can see this. Um, you know, there's Mars at 4 Aquarius. There's Neptune at 26 Pisces. So the sun is 26 degrees away from Neptune and it's 26 around 26 degrees away from Mars. So, you know, the Mars-Neptune midpoint can be a bit confused 
Uh, some of us might be tempted to put our energies in the wrong direction. Uh, you know, particularly with the sun in Pisces, I suppose Pisces can get tempted. You know, Pisces is a flexible sign. Um, I think uh, if you're, if I remember rightly, yeah, so if you're into the tarot cards, um, the Pisces is associated with the moon, um, the tarot card, the moon. Um, and so the whole thing about the moon is that you've got to stick to the path. Um, I think the tarot card often has a path that you're supposed to stick you're supposed to stick to. But there are many temptations uh, to leave that path. Um, you know, not help, but, but we're tra we are traversing this path through the moonlight, not the sunlight. And the moonlight can be deceptive. And so with the sun on the Mars-Neptune midpoint, we're perhaps reminded of the moon, that tarot card. Um, so easy to leave the path. And if we do leave the path, there are all sorts of temptations. And... Uh, bad things could happen. But uh, I'm sure, I'm confident that all of us will be able to um, stick to the path. Um, okay, so that is a broad picture. And now um, I want to consider what's going on for the 12 signs. So these are my forecasts for today, which is Monday, February the 19th. 2024. Aries. Things are changing for you, uh, Aries. I, I think that you're, you are less uh, concerned about um, your social life uh, being seen and heard. Um, you kind of have to an extent done all that, although I understand that, you know, Mars, your ruler, um, is in is in Aquarius, and so with Mars in Aquarius, in general, um, it is a time when you are you are interested in other people. You're interested in what other people do have to say. Um, that's true, uh, but I think to an extent, Aries, you may feel that uh, you want to step back. Um, you know, a lot of the action has taken place. And you perhaps need space to, um, you know, think things through, uh, to feel things through. Um, you know, maybe Aries, you've, you know, you've burnt yourself out a little. Um, if you look at what's, if you look at the overall chart, Aries, you'll, you'll see that uh, today, you know, there are no planets in far signs. Um, Okay, that has that has been the case um, for for some time. Okay, Charon is in Aries, but there are no major planets in in far signs, um, and so it may just feel that the energy has just gone, um, and that uh, you know if you try to have a high profile day, it it just might be disappointing, and plus you may need to you know you, know, you may need to recharge your batteries. Um, now, you know, I'm not saying that it's going to be a bad day, you know, far from it. I think it can be actually um, a very good day. It's a day, you know, when you can just um, relax. And, you know, ideally, Aries, I, I think you'd spend time at home or somewhere, somewhere where you feel safe and secure. Um, and, you, you know, when you're in places that you're comfortable in, you know, okay, it doesn't always have to be your home. Um, there may be particular places that you just feel um, very grounded in. Uh, you know, you can do useful stuff. Um, you, you can um, you can take action to stabilize things. So perhaps if over the last few days or week you realize that something is getting a bit out of control, uh, needs some work, um, then now is a perfect time to bring it um, back under control. It's not going to take a lot of effort. Um, if you're, if you've, if you've got room to breathe, uh, if you haven't got people getting in your way, um, then I think you'll be able to accomplish what you need to accomplish. You know, you know I'm not saying that you're going to accomplish um, amazing things. Uh, it's not that kind of day. 
um, but you know there can be quiet progress um, and you know in terms of relationships uh, in terms of other people um, you know we shouldn't forget that Venus is moving towards a conjunction of Mars um, you know this conjunction happens in a few days time um, so I think you are starting to feel the influence of this conjunction between Venus and Mars um, so if you're already involved um, with another person um, then in spite of your of a certain preference for your own space I think now is you know if you if you can make room for another person um, then I don't think that's a bad thing you know especially if this person is on your wavelength and yeah with this Venus conjunct Mars there is um, certainly seems that there is someone out there who you can get on well with um, and you know this conjunction between Venus and Mars is um, is getting very close um, but uh, you, know, you do have to think of Venus you know, your Mars you know Mars is quite an assertive um, influence you know Venus is coming your way um, Venus does need to be protected so if if you're getting close to someone you may start to feel that you do need to protect well that's what you should be feeling um, what you don't want to do is alienate them um, you could do that as well because um, although Mars is your ruling planet, it is quite an aggressive influence. So if someone gets really close to you um, and you want them to be really close to you, you have to be welcoming. You have to make a bit of an effort. If, you know, if you, you, what you don't want to have is attitude hostile unless, unless that's um, really what you intend. And I should also point out that um, with the right people... Um, not lots of people, because as I said, not to, you know, today is not a day for wild socialising. But with um, the right person, um, you can be very creative um, in an artistic and business sense. Um, in perhaps one or two people, you can sort of meet them. You don't have to meet them face to face, whether it's on Zoom, or the phone, whatever. And you can have some really constructive um, interactions where you can um, make some real progress in terms of whatever creative or business projects um, you want to um, involve yourself in. Taurus. Well, there have been some big changes astrologically. Well, they happened today. I mean, we've had um, the moon um, moving into Cancer and we have had uh, the sun moving into Pisces. Um, I think from your perspective uh, that's probably quite a good thing um, because you know over the weekend we had you know we had this huge build up in in Aquarius you know we had the, we had you know we had these we had five planets in Aquarius okay the build up had been happening uh, um, a bit before uh, the weekend but it was it was getting a bit overwhelming um, and I think for many Taurians might have felt that there was so much to do um, that they had sort of big plans but it, it, but it may have been um, just a bit too much and now this Aquarius uh, conjunction oh, okay, using wide orbs but this, this Aquarius build up is not quite so strong because the sun has moved out of Aquarius um, into Pisces and I think that can sort of help you relax a bit um, and probably it actually makes you a nicer person with the sun going into Pisces um, you can you can be a little more flexible um, in in terms of your social life you can you can listen listen more for, to other people and you can use your feelings more um, you can adapt more to changing circumstances um, and so from a perspective of an outsider um, with the sun going into Pisces and indeed with the moon going into Cancer uh, you know you're going to come over I think as being a, a nicer person and um, this moon going into Cancer means that um, you know you've got 
you've got Jupiter in your continuing to move through your star sign, but the moon is now in in mutual re mutual reception by exaltation um, with Jupiter. Now, yes, this happens every month, um, so it's not an unusual event. Um, but uh, you know, when the moon is in Cancer, uh, it's it is a fortunate time for Taurians when you know. In general, I think you're, you know, you are quite lucky, um, and you are able to create um, cr to create stability um, around you. Um, you know, you you can see what is undermining you, what has undermined you in the past, and you can take action uh, to um, resolve a problem. So, for example, if you've had difficulties with other people um uh, people in close who are perhaps in close proximity to you uh you can sort of reach out to them talk to them try to be reasonable with them and i think in most cases um you know they are going to listen to you and they're going to, to take you seriously because you know you're going to come over as just being a nice comforting and reassuring person um and uh, you know it's because of that that uh, you know all you, you, your various interactions um with with other people are going to work work really well now that doesn't mean to say that uh you can forget about your ambitions your ambitions are still really important to you um you know okay the sun might have moved out of aquarius into pisces but still you know there is a lot there are a lot of planets in aquarius um and um you know venus is you know venus is your ruler venus is in aquarius venus is making a conjunction to mars um that conjunction to mars um will be exact in a few days time um so in terms of your work um you are charismatic um and I think you're perhaps more charismatic than you were last week because there's because now there's more fle you have more flexibility. Um, you know, charisma is not just about sort of um, standing up like some sort of tin pot dictator and telling people what to do. And people say, "Oh, yeah, so charismatic, speaks nicely, and speaks in a very powerful way." That's not what charisma is. You know, charisma is a two-way process. Um, you have to. You have to understand the room. You have to be able to read the room. Um, you know, sometimes Taurians can actually be very bad at reading the room, uh, but not today. Um, I think that uh, you you understand people's limitations. Uh, you understand people's fears and their worries, and um, I think that by addressing them, uh, you can put your own. You can actually give a major sort of boost to your own position. So. Um, yeah, so if you're working today, um, your ability to be flexible um, is going to help you. And by understanding what makes people tick, um, you can, you know, you can, um, you can be, um, you can be uh, very effective. Um, so really, Taurus, uh, it is a good day uh, in terms of relationships. Uh, Likewise, uh, I don't see I don't see any problems. You know, as I just any real problems. You know, I, you know, as I just said, Venus is moving to a conjunction of Mars. Um, Venus conjunct Mars is a real relationship conjunction. That conjunction, as I just said, is not exact today, but it does give the picture of you moving towards someone else. Um, and right now. Um, you know you are open to getting close to someone i mean that you know you're, you're you haven't uh, sort of battened down the hatches um you you're, you you know you're in you're in the mood and to relate um you know for a number of different reasons um of course venus is moving to a conjunction of mars so mars can be someone who is a bit overwhelming a bit assertive over assertive um so be a little careful so if you see that that you're you're getting close to someone who has um zero flexibility and a high opinion of themselves okay then in that situation 
um, you might want to reconsider your approach. But, um, you know, in a general sense, Taurus, um, things are look things are looking good, and I think um, um, you'll be able to have a, a a warm, a sort of reassuring day when there's going to be a lot going on, which will sort of make you feel comfortable, and most importantly, you have the capacity to make other people feel comfortable. Gemini. Um, Gemini, there has been, or well, there is an ongoing change, uh, which um, I think is quite important. Um, you know, the sun is moving into Pisces. Um, so from a Gemini perspective, um, the sign Pisces is um, often connected with uh, career, your work, um, the way forward. Um, you know, that is because Pisces as a sign is is angular to Gemini. Um, if you count forward from... If you count forward from Gemini, Pisces is 10 signs on. Uh, so you get this sort of co concept of 10th house uh, in astrology. 10th house is about career, the way forward. Um, and so with the sun moving, into, moving, in, moving from out of Aquarius into Gemini, you may feel that some of you know, your ideas and your philo philo philosophizing about the world and your direction in, in life some of it is has, some of that philosophizing has um, reached some conclusions and perhaps you want to use your insights um, in a more practical way and so yeah so Gemini's a lot of Gemini's are going to want to take action to establish themselves in a career sense um, perhaps you want to branch out in terms of um, business something something something's coming up and you feel you want to take advantage of it um, and uh, you know you are helped by the fact that uh, the moon um, is moving out of moving out of your star sign now you might think oh well that's a shame you had the moon in your star sign that was great well yes it was great having a moon in your star sign um, meant that you were kind of in your comfort zone uh you were able to um you know to respond to the world around you um you you understood what was going on you you were able to communicate very well but uh you know were you actually achieving very much with the moon in your moving through your star sign it, it might have been interesting but you know, you could have too much of a good thing. And with a moon changing sign moving into cancer, it does make you sort of more practical and uh, more realistic. And uh, the moon making that trine to the sun, does, yeah, I think it makes you kind of um, more serious, but in a good way. Um, you can see that um, there are certainly um, things um, that you would like to do. Um, um, you may also be thinking about um, about the financial and material side of things. Um, do you have enough money? Are you earning enough money? Um, what do you own? What do you not own? Um, now, there's certainly you know no need for panic in this direction. Um, it's, it, because today is today is a very sort of gentle day, um, and you can um, sort of gently look at your situation and gently work out what would what you would like to do um and you know also in terms of the way you're relating uh to um to other people you know gemini's can sometimes just talk too much um say so much that the message gets lost um but i think today you can be um you can be more um, down to earth um, in the way you communicate. Uh, you don't have to use so many words, and by by simply saying what you want, um, I think you can get what you want. Um, 
because you won't be shocking you won't be frightening you won't be jarring you're going to be you'll be able to use you know use your words to, yeah to um put people at their ease and i do think uh gemini one one good thing about the way you're communicating is that um you know even if deep down you have um a lot of self-interest i mean we all have self-interest nothing to be certainly nothing to be ashamed of um in the way you communicate you can give the impression that it's not about self-interest um that it's actually about some wider cause you know even if you're asking for money you can you can ask for money in such a way that it doesn't seem as if you're only thinking about yourself you're thinking you know by asking for money it seems that you're you know you can um, you know the other person might feel that they're helping the community at large um why well you could say well give me more money and that uh perhaps helps everyone else because it, it i suppose it encourages you to be loyal and um, it um, makes everything nice and harmonious i mean that sounds kind of unrealistic and you know, even as i'm saying this it sounds really sounds unrealistic um but uh, i think when it when it actually comes down to it when you are trying to get more money in whatever way um um it it will seem reasonable reasonable and finally i should say something about relationships um i don't think i don't think it's 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 a bad day at all um it, it may not be um wonderfully exciting but uh you know you do have the capacity to get on well with people um certainly existing relationships um should should function um should function very well um you know as i said you're going to be using fewer words uh you're going to be more genuine um and i think that um people are going to trust you and you're not going to be demanding even if you're making demands you're not going to be demanding um and so um i th i think it's true that sort of existing relationships can certainly be improved uh new relationships possibly um but i don't think you're going to push the matter particularly um if someone new comes into your life um then i think they'll you know they'll form a favorable impression of you so you know overall gemini it's not a dramatic day but uh looks pretty fortunate to me cancer the moon is now starting to move into your star sign um now i understand the moon moves into your star sign every month so it's not a big deal in one sense um but when the moon does move into your star sign it's a time when you are fairly strongly placed uh, because you understand what's going on around you um you know you 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 fit in and from an emotional perspective um you're you're at one with everything around you and your feelings are giving you the right signals and you know matters are helped by the fact that the moon is not just the moon is not just moving into pisces moving into cancer um it's making a trine aspect to the sun um you know this is this is a really um great time of the lunar cycle uh the moon is getting bigger the moon is waxing uh this is the fortunate growth side of the lunar cycle and cancerians are very sensitive to the lunar cycle and uh, this 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 part of the lunar cycle you know you are going to thrive uh at this time so um so really do 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 make the most of it and you know the great thing is you don't have to be dramatic about it um you don't you know you you, you don't have to make an exhibition of yourself um to have a good day uh you just have to 
let things happen naturally and really um that that should that should be and can be enough um you don't even have to be close minded you know sometimes um, one might might think, even Cancerians, Cancerians partic- particularly can think that if you're too open-minded, um, that can create trouble. But not today. Um, you can be open-minded. You can see what people have to say. You can look at new ideas. You can benefit from new ideas. If you don't like an idea, you don't have to make a fuss about it. You can just say, OK, well, it's not for me. It's not a problem. Um, but it's all, it's all very natural. Um, and... Now, you are helped by the fact that um, the moon is um, making a sextile aspect, the moon in Cancer is making a sextile aspect to Jupiter in Taurus. So as I've already said, um, the moon and Jupiter are, are in mutual reception. Uh, they're in each other's exaltation. Um, uh, and that that is fortunate in general. And it's fortunate for you because the moon, the because the moon is your ruler, um, and I think in terms of um, dealing with society at large, you know, you're just naturally in your element. Walk into a room full of people, you just feel comfortable. Um, you don't have to say anything. You don't have to put on any act you, you you're just comfortable um and so uh, you know there's certainly no need to be shy uh, I, and i think the reason you don't have to be shy is because you don't actually have to do anything it's just enough to um just it's just enough to uh be yourself um as far as um relationships are concerned um the moon you know, when it moves into Cancer, is making a trine to Saturn. So in the, can- in the Cancerian chart, um, uh, Cancer, um, Saturn has a, Saturn rules um, your opposite sign. Um, so, you know, there's a natural affinity between you and the other person. It just, it's just, it's just easy um and you know you may be able to benefit in terms of one to one relationships but you know because there's that other person is can be a bit of a stabilizing influence so if there's something that you you are a little bit worried about another person can sort it out can just just you know all through through their mere presence can can sort it out but i don't think um right now there is going to be much much worrying much worrying you now if you are in in the mood for meeting new people um if, if, if that's important to you then i think you can um as i said you don't have to go out of your way but uh, i think there may be some newish people relationships which can be can be strengthened but People who have a, a slightly different view of the world from from you, um, perhaps their friendship should be cultivated um, because I think that they um, definitely have something to offer. Leo, um, you know, I'm I've been quite positive so far. You know, I've gone through I've gone through the four signs. Um, uh, when I've looked at the, looked at the four signs, um, I'm not saying Leo that things need to be difficult today, but I think they could be difficult. Um, you know, one reason is the fact that you know the sun the sun is your ruler and it it has changed sign. Um, it's moved into Pisces, and from a Leo perspective, um, that is quite a serious. Um, that's quite a serious change um you know pisces and leo do not have a natural affinity with each other those two signs you know leo is a far sign uh leo is a positive sign um leo from a northern hemisphere perspective is a, is a summer sign um so i understand that there are people watching through our, in australia and new zealand and other parts of the southern hemisphere um but uh so I'm 
apologies for, for my sort of Northern Hemisphere bias, but there's a seasonal difference, shall I say, between Leo and um, Pisces. Um, and I think, I think you're kind of aware that you just, things don't fit in as much as they used to, um, as perhaps they did over the weekend. Um, and so you're having to deal with a sort of a more complex reality. Um, and, you know, at the same time, you know, I should point out that the sun, your ruler, is conjunct um, the Mars-Neptune midpoint. So sun on the Mars-Neptune midpoint, um, you know, you may be tempted to go into places you shouldn't be going to. Um, you know, the reason these temptations might exist, because the world may seem a bit flat, Oh, I don't mean literally flat, I'm not suggesting you're a flat earther, but uh, a bit flat and a bit boring. And so you might want to do something to, you know, spice things up. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it um, because the sun is on the Mars-Neptune midpoint. You know, you could get, you could, you could, yeah, you could get tempted into areas that are um, difficult, dangerous. They might be exciting, you know, always going for the bright lights. Uh, but, you know, you don't want to be like a bug going for the bright lights of an insect trap. Um, so um, you do have to be careful um, in that sense. Um, now, I think what you really... So, Leah, what you really have to do is you have to sort of look at what's going on today and do what works for you. So... What should be working for you? Um, now, I have said that the moon is making a trine aspect to your sun. Um, uh, sun, yes, is your ruler. The, the trine, you know, when the, so when the sun in the Pisces, moon in Cancer, um, you know, there is a fortunate relationship there which you can use. Um, but you have to understand that um, from a Leo perspective, um, the moon in Cancer and the sun in Pisces are in the sectors of your chart which are quite uh, introspective, uh, which are not high profile. Um, and so I would have said that today, um, you know, like 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 the bug um approaching um sort of a neon um insect trap you need to kind of avoid the bright lights uh, it might the bright lights might be tempting particularly as the sun is on the mars neptune midpoint but the bright lights should be avoided um you need to um you know you need to be more private you know you need to nurture yourself today um, and sort of focus sort of more on your feelings, um, focus on what is comfortable, um, what is really comfortable, you know, think about it, what is comfortable, don't, don't just think that it's being, you're, you know, you're, it's comfortable when everyone is telling you how wonderful you are, it's comfortable when you're surrounded by people, no, y you know what is truly comfortable, and, and when you're truly comfortable, things can really start working for you, um, Oh, yeah, and that includes um, you know quite high pro high profile things like um, for example um, your uh, your career business um, it can actually be a good day uh, from a career perspective provided you do things right um, provided uh, you take some time off perhaps or if not taking time off giving yourself time to think and to plan and to feel um then you you'll get you know you can start to get a sort of a, a new perspective um and by adopting this sort of a low profile approach in general uh i don't think it's not just your career that's gonna gonna going to improve i think you know you can do work there but you don't have to be in the bright lights in terms of career but it's also that's the way to handle relationships. Um, just, uh, um, just, just be yourself, um, and uh, don't try and 
push out your personality too much, uh, because in terms of relationships, that's not what's required. Um, you just you you have to perhaps be more um, more more responsive rather than yeah rather than just being completely focused on your ego. That's what that's what people are going to want. That's what people are going to are going to like uh, the people close to you. That's what they're going to want. Um, and you know relationships can certainly work because there's a there's a favorable aspect between um, the moon and the sun. Sun is your ruler. Um, so um, if you adopt that kind of approach, that sort of easygoing approach, I mean, a, a serious approach as in, uh, you know, not being in a hurry, just not feeling that anything has to be done. Yes, I think that uh, pretty much most areas of your life um, can can work. Though, as I said, there are temptations today, but uh, Leo, I'm confident that you can avoid them. Virgo. Um, Virgo, it's a day when you are, uh, you're you're, you're quite, um, you're quite sensitive today. Um, A lot of people are sensitive today, and I certainly don't mean that in a negative way. Uh, You know, Virgos can be insensitive uh, because they just focus on the wrong things they can just surface on they can focus on things on the surface but that's not that's not how it's going to work out today um, I think that today you are pretty respectful of the world around you and the limitations around you and um, uh, the people that have to be dealt with um, and y- you will you will know you will know what to do and how to behave. And I think you're going to be helped by the fact that, um, you know, the sun has changed sign. Uh, it has moved out of Aquarius. It's it's moved into Pisces. So Pisces, uh, from a Virgo perspective, that is your opposite sign. And in astrology, opposite signs um, are often connected with... Um, they're often connected with um, the other person. So you're better able to respond to other people. Um, when you're with people, uh, you know, you, you, you will know what's expected of you. And, you know, you will be helped by the fact that, you know, the sun, is not, the sun has not just um, gone into Pisces, but it's also receiving a, a favourable aspect from the moon in Cancer. Um, so you you know you, you'll have um a few difficulties very few difficulties being able to put people at their ease um and uh, in terms of your sociability uh, you will be quietly sociable um you know i don't think you're going to be in the mood for um you know sort of uh you know, arriving on the stage and with sort of fireworks and all that kind of stuff. That's 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 not you, but uh, you know, you are you know you are socially very capable um, today, um, and I think that the way you carry yourself um, with in, in in a social situation is going to uh, be just right. Uh, you you will indeed um, get get the balance right, um, and um, I, I I don't think that you're going to be you know obsessed with your own ego. I don't think it's going to be. You, I don't think you're going to be desperate to be heard. Um, if other people want to talk their heads off, and you're not going to feel ignored, you're just going to think, oh well, that's fine. Um, I. So you know, there's no, there's there really is no need to um, no need to um, push yourself, um, but do consider you know do consider um, do consider um, society at large and the way things should be. Um, uh, you know, the moon 
the moon moving into moving into moving into cancer you know the moon is a, in cancer is a water sign um and i think it does make you sensitive uh to the, the society in which which you live and i do understand that a lot of people regardless of their sign have been having pretty negative thoughts about the way society is going um that is happening um you know most people seem to think that as far as I, maybe it's just the people I've talked to, but most people seem to think that society is just completely collapsing in one way or another. Um, but I think that if you look around your society, uh, I think in a way you're actually going to be quite optimistic. Um, you're going to see possibilities. If you allow yourself to see possibilities. Now, of course, Virgos can be very critical they can just look at the negative things i don't know they can look at the graffiti they can look at the crime reports and they can think well that's a sure sign that things are declining but you can look beyond that and maybe you find it normally quite difficult to look beyond that but i think today you can um and in that sense you can sort of create for yourself um a vision of optimism and it's this vision of you know seeing the world and the universe in a different way has been with you you know for the last few months in since last year it's been with you on and off I, you've been tr trying to reach for it you've often been rebutted you've then you've seen details that have just made you think that it's all a waste of time but um think about the way things could be um virgo um and you know maybe uh, because of your sense of detail, because um, you understand that uh, you can't just get results through wishful thinking, um, because of that sort of materialism that is fundamental to your star sign, um, you may actually be in a position um, to make, um, to start to make those changes around you. Um, so yeah it, it it is it is important um to be to be positive about it um and uh you know to go back to relationships um you know it is a time when you know virgos can be very fortunate um in the people they meet uh you know particularly today um with um the moon in a very in a sign that's very sociable, at least from a Virgo perspective, and the moon making a, a trine to the sun, and the moon being in mutual reception to Jupiter. Now, that mutual reception to Jupiter, remember, moon is in the exaltation of Jupiter. Jupiter is in the exaltation of the moon in Taurus. And Jupiter, from a Virgo perspective, is a ruler of your seventh house, which is Pisces, um, your opposite sign. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, your contacts with other people at all levels, you know, whether it's social, one-to-one, -one, um, should um, really um, go to plan and actually might um, exceed your expectations. Libra. Um, this is, it's a, a mixed picture because we've got two, I won't say conflicting things going on, but uh, we've got two new emphases uh, moving, in, moving into your life. Um, now, the first thing is that um, Librans do have to start focusing um, a little more on um, detail. Now, the concept of detail... Uh, I mean, for the last year, probably, um, Librans have perhaps been reminded at sort of regular intervals um, that um, sloppy thinking and sloppy organisation is not a good idea. Um, and I think that today, you know, there are perhaps further reminders. Um, I think that you're, you realise that... Um, certain things need to be need to be dealt with maybe you've got away with not dealing with them in the past but now you've got to you've got to get back to it um 
and that might be tedious um but you know you, you know libra that it's something really that needs to be done and you know once you actually start doing it it won't be um as bad bad as you think um and also uh this seems to have an impact uh on your work and your career if you're work in your career if you're working today um because um there's a there is a a trine aspect between the sun and the moon and this trine between the sun and the moon does uh have an influence on your work um i th i think a fortunate influence um so if you're working today um uh, if you're focusing on you, you know if you've got a business whatever you're doing in that direction um uh well even if you're doing something like working for an organization in a voluntary or charitable capacity even then it still applies um you can start to see that in order to make good progress um there are things that need to be done and i think progress is something you're going to want to do i mean progress is going to be important um you, you you do feel that in certain areas you do need to be seen and heard um but in order to make an impact uh preparations are required and i think it's possible um that there is one thing um libra that is just a bit of a mess it's got a bit out of hand um and it's probably a good idea to deal with it now because if you wait uh it's it's just going to could go from bad to worse so sort it out now and i think that you'll be um saving yourself um a lot of trouble um in the future um looking at how you uh deal with other people uh specifically um uh well um venus is venus is your ruler and venus is moving towards a conjunction of mars um this conjunction of mars doesn't happen immediately it happens sort of later in the week um but it's still happening um venus is just over a degree from mars now at the moment but it's closing it's they're closing in on each other now um so um from a libran perspective you know venus is the, venus is your ruling planet mars is your uh mars is the other person um so uh it does seem that you and someone else are getting closer um so who is the other person uh is is this a desirable situation I, i mean i think it can be a desirable situation um though you shouldn't forget that uh Mars can be a problem planet. So if you find that you are getting closer to someone, do consider that person. Who who are they? Um are they someone who you want to spend time with? Um is this person overly aggressive? You know, perhaps verbally aggressive. I'm, I'm not talking about violence. I mean Mars is in Aquarius. Mars Aquarius is not a particularly violent sign. Uh but if the, if this you know is this the kind of person who's going to respect you uh do bear that in mind and there's no place for sort of wishful thinking um but it may be someone you know very well in which case you 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 know what you're dealing with um and if you want to get closer to this person it's it's happening right now because venus is moving to venus is moving to a conjunction of mars um also um in general if you look at the position of venus uh you you know you come over in terms of other people how do how do you occur to other people well today you occur to other people as someone who is quite sort of accommodating who is not going to cause trouble someone who you know i think some people someone who people might just want to get closer to and in general because that's 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 the way you are uh sorry not when i say that's the way you are that's the way you are today um um 
you you know you are someone that in general yeah people do want to get closer to you um because maybe because you're nice or you're reasonable or attractive um you have a constructive attitude um for whatever reason um so overall libra i think uh things are working well uh but i suppose two important points there's something that needs to be sorted out because it could get out of hand and another person another finally if you're in terms of relationships yes it looks a good day um but over the next couple of days do consider the people you're getting close to um try to work out what kind of people you're dealing with um because um you know you know that way you can work out whether you know whether you really want to get close to um someone you know because you know what you don't want is people who just are um are obnoxious and uh, make a lot of noise and are overly overly assertive but uh, so yeah you have need to make your choices there scorpio scorpio you know things do seem to be moving uh i mean you scorpio you are a water sign uh you are uh known uh for being quite emotional and by emotional i don't mean that in a negative sense uh you you relate to the world through your feelings and at the moment uh you know we have a lot of stuff in building up in water signs i mean okay there's a lot of other stuff going on in sort of air signs but the key the key the key planets the key bodies in the sky are the sun and the moon uh they are more important from anything else uh, these are the bodies we can you know we can always see with our naked eye they're the largest bodies in the sky and you know the moon is moving into cancer and cancer is a water sign sun is moving into pisces pisces is a water sign uh and of course scorpio is a water sign so we've got this sort of triangular energy um going on with the sun and the moon sort of feeding your star sign and so i i think that you're going to really feel at one with yourself and and if this change is happened very happening very quickly i mean in fact the sun and the moon move into water signs uh within within uh less than an hour of each other uh london time in early in london time that would be early in the morning because it depends on your time zone um exactly where that is uh so uh you are feeling that there is there is action going on um and you i think in general scorpio you you do feel um in tune um with the world um um and as far as uh you and other people are concerned i i think if there is cause for optimism um you know the moon has moved into cancer it's it's making a sextile aspect to jupiter and jupiter is um jupiter is in your opposite sign of taurus um so moon sextile jupiter means that um you know you can respond very well uh to the world and to the people in the world um and your sensitivity is going to be just so natural you will just know how to behave you um you, and you will know how to you will know how to assert yourself um you i mean scorpio is always what know how to look after themselves or they should know how to look after themselves i understand some scorpios like to martyr themselves but um you know every healthy scorpio does know how to look after themselves um so the moon is making this great has this great relationship to jupiter um with jupiter ruling um ruling your sorry jupiter with jupiter in your 7th house with moon making a sextile to jupiter uh so um you know your contacts with other people can be life affirming um and 
and they might be enlightening you know scorpios i know scorpios can be quite set in their ways uh but you know you always need to be open to the possibility of something new uh a sort of a new idea uh a new way of looking at the world um perhaps um a new way of um of being creative and creativity is actually going to be um pretty important um you know not just in terms of your sort of private life and what you do in your free time but also um if you're working in terms of you know what you you know what's happening in your career and your, your business you know it's not it shouldn't just be about um having a job and having a job description and just going through the job description and making sure you stick to the job description um it's about doing doing things a bit differently uh now you might think you shouldn't be doing things a bit differently uh you may think that the old ways are the best ways i mean i suppose scorpio is a fixed sign that's going to be sometimes the way scorpio feels um but uh a new approach can be um very useful uh a new and creative approach will be appreciated um um it may be about uh something you've something you've learned or something that you hear from other people you know you you may be told something or given some advice which at first sight seems a bit sort of radical uh doesn't not the kind of advice you want to follow uh but if you think about that advice and you try to act on it okay don't don't go completely over the top but if you try to gently act on some advice you're given and do things a bit differently um in your um in your work uh you might be pleasantly surprised um by how well um things how well things work um uh, you know but i'm not i'm not saying scorpio that you should throw caution to the wind um you know change happens slowly it is true um that the sun has moved into pisces um that does make things a bit less intense for you but you know also you know there are four planets in aquarius still it's a lot of planets in aquarius and from a scorpio perspective you know aquarius is very much um about um sort of grounding and stability and aquarius is a fixed sign uh some of that fixity is starting to dissipate but still grounding and security um is um going to be very important to you um uh, and any action in terms of important relationships is going to need to happen in the context of that grounding and security um you know because you know when dealing with um other people for whatever reason uh you are going to be putting your security first and that's a good thing sagittarius uh i suppose sagittarius um things are starting to slow down a bit um you know there have been um some important sign changes um well today there have been some important sign changes and um you know the impact of those sign changes will be i think to to slow you down a bit you know the sun going into pisces moon going into cancer you know pisces and cancer are you know they're very different signs from sagittarius um so uh you have uh you have a situation perhaps where there is maybe um less to excite you um you know there are no planets in fire signs um unless you can't car on in the north node um so that spark that energy is is not is perhaps not there and there are fewer planets in air signs you know so um you know air and fire do have a natural affinity with each other and there's still there's still um 
planets in Aquarius, which Aquarius is a sign that Sagittarius has, you know, two signs apart. Those those signs, Sagittarius and Aquarius, work very well. Uh, But uh, there is a planet that's left. um, The sun has left Aquarius. So um, there is going to be less action. And um, I think that uh, you may have to get used to a period of time where you have to um, be more structured, um, where you have to um, focus on what needs to be done. And, you know, you shouldn't get upset if you're being, you know, if you're not being given the attention um, that you feel you deserve. I mean, you can't get attention all the time. You can't always... um, be a major player that that's that's just that just can't happen um so you know take what you've got um i just look at you know for example you know look at what's going on in your immediate environment you don't have to go to the other side of the world to find excitement um you don't even need to find excitement why you know you've had enough excitement you don't need any excitement um um it's probably all there for you um and you know i'm i'm also um you know optimistic about uh what you know what kind of day you can have um, because you know jupiter is jupiter's your ruler uh jupiter rules sagittarius and so you know when one's doing forecasts for sagittarius one does look at jupiter and see what is the condition of jupiter um jupiter's position isn't actually that bad um because um jupiter is in mutual reception with the moon um you know that's because you know Jupiter is in Taurus. Uh, uh, the Moon is in Cancer. Um, uh, the Jupiter, the Moon is therefore in the sign of Jupiter's exaltation, and Jupiter is the sign of the Moon's exaltation. Um, and what that means is um, Sagittarius is um, well in terms of excitement. Okay, I've d- I've said that today is not going to be particularly exciting. Uh, but if there is any excitement, um, or if you like, revelation, um, it, it's going to come more from what's going on in your private world. You know, you don't have to go out there to find excitement. You can find excitement um, through your own private intuition. It might be, I don't know, it might be spending time reading, I don't know, if you're into religion, reading some religious text, you know, whether it's the Bible or the Bhagavad Gita or the Quran, whatever, or something else, you know, you read it, and with that moon sextile Jupiter, um, you can feel some, you, you can feel something. Jupiter is a religious planet. It's a spiritual planet. You can get real sort of inspiration, but very, but it's the kind of inspiration that you don't shout about it. It, it, it's it's quite it's quite deep and personal. Um, you don't need necessarily a religious text. Going for a walk with you know amongst trees, amongst nature, some you know something very private. So in that private world, and I know that Sagittarius Sagittarius has a big reputation for being sort of extrovert out there with other people. Um, try not to be too Sagittarian today and. Give you put yourself in a position where you can have that kind of private um, inspiration. Um, yeah, the inspiration you probably don't want to tell anyone else about it, but it's going to be um, very real. Capricorn, um, I got a comment about from a Capricorn um, a few days ago, and Capricorn and Capricorn was complaining. Um, that uh, my recent forecasts had been too negative. Now, I'm not going to just um, suddenly become more positive um, because um, because I've had a complaint that I've been too negative, but I understand that. Um, 
I think when I did the signs, when I did my last reading for Capricorn, I think I was doing the, the reading for Capricorn for the weekend. And after I did that reading, I thought, ah, that was a bit, uh, that was a bit too negative. Um, not just too negative. My delivery might have been a bit flat, and uh, um, I certainly wasn't very enthusiastic. Um, but you know, things change, and today um, we've got two important sign changes. Um, the sun is moving out of Aquarius um, into into Pisces, uh, and the moon is moving out of Gemini. Uh, into cancer and I think the those two uh, movements um, of the sun and the moon um, are pretty favorable for, for Capricorns um, I think um, it, it's going to make you uh, it's going to make you more optimistic and I think it's also going to make you more connected uh, because you know the moon going into cancer um, you know, cancer is your opposite sign. And um, in the Capricorn chart, uh, the opposite sign is often connected um, with um, relationships, um, how you deal with the other. And the moon is in cancer. The moon rules cancer. Uh, and the moon is in neutral reception by exaltation with Jupiter. Um and Jupiter is uh, in Taurus, and Taurus is a sign is a sign which has a natural affinity with Capricorn, your star sign. So, in terms of the world around you, um, you you can benefit from the world around you. Um, so, um, there are things happening, uh, you know, outside your immediate sphere. Um, which which you can take advantage of, um, and I think, you know, all the various relationships you're in, um, should you know I think can be um, fortunate and they can be nurturing, um, and you know they can make you feel feel good about yourself, and you know you will be helped by the fact. Um, that you're going to be, you know, very good at expressing yourself. Um, you know, you don't have to shout. Um, you know, the moon is trying the sun. The the lights, as they are, the sun and the moon are collectively called the lights. The lights are in trine. This this trine has an impact on your star sign. So. Um, if there's something you don't like, uh, if there's something you want to change, uh, you can tell people about it. And you can tell people in such a way that you're not going to cause offence. Um, and in that way, you can, you know, you can quietly um, move forward um, with, your, with your agenda. Um, and um, I also think that uh, you can um, bring people together. Um, so I'm not just talking about your relationships with other people. I'm talking about other people's relationships with each other. And you may see the opportunity to bring people together. And that may be, actually be part of a way in which you can, um, you know, make the world a better place. And, of course, make yourself feel more comfortable. Um, because it's, you know, it's about creating harmony. You know, the sun and the moon... Uh, are in trine aspect in both in water signs this is a harmonious relationship and as a capricorn you can take this harmonious relationship um a nat this natural harmonious relationship and you can actually use it kind of like a tool and yes by you know by bringing people together so see what opportunities you have for bringing people together um might be in terms of family uh might be in terms of work maybe something else um uh you, yeah you can be the person um that um makes it makes it happen um so really capricorn um it is look it is looking like um a day when you know things can really start happening and you can um uh you can perhaps put some of the sort of 
disappointments of a recent past um, behind you. Um, and uh, yeah, you're helped by the fact that um, you know other people are on your side. In fact, the world is on your side today. Uh, so yes, Capricorn, um, make the most of it. Aquarius. Um, there is still, Aquarius, uh, a lot of activity in your star sign. Um, we've still got four planets in Aquarius, but uh, the sun is changing sign. Uh, the sun is moving out of Aquarius. Um, so um, the Aquarius birthday season is well and truly over. Uh, no more no more Aquarian birthdays for at least another 11 months. Um, and uh, you shouldn't, I mean, you shouldn't be so worried about this. Um, you know, you've, you've, um, you now have a clearer idea about who you are and uh, what you want to achieve. And um, with the sun moving out of your star sign, um, that can be seen as like, a probe moving out into the universe. You've now got to change that world or that little part of the world uh, in order uh, to, to to actualize your realizations about what you want. It's not enough to just have ideas. It's not enough to just have a great sense of selfhood. Um, you've got to have a little bit of an impact um, on the um, world around you. Um, and that may actually be quite materialistic. Um, you know, it might relate to money and possessions. Um, now, I mean, money is uh, in a way a token, isn't it? I mean, money is a token for how society perceives you. It can be. Um, Whereas money in itself, perhaps, is is ephemeral, has little value. It's still a sign. Um, if you know, it's it's often a sign of actually how you're valued. Um, so do give do give that do give that um, some thought. Um, and perhaps in order to actualize yourself, to really put into action what. Uh, what you want to be and to consider the realizations you made over the last month, um, it may be necessary to involve yourself in, say, you know, some kind of organization. There's something that needs to be organized um, that, uh, you know, may recently have become um, a little bit uh, difficult, perhaps neglected. And so whatever that neglected thing is, uh, yes, I think it needs to be um, it needs to be recreated, um, and in fact, it's in putting money and organisation together. It's 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 actually a good day for uh, for um, financial and material organisation, um, or perhaps um, reorganisation. Um, but if you do want to organise things. Uh, it's going to be important that you're not disturbed. Um, lots of people can't clear this this thing up. Maybe one person, two person, two people, probably just you. There's just something that you probably need to organise on your own. Um, yeah, I think you, you know what needs to be done. And um, I think that uh, you can just um, go ahead and do it. Um, so um, don't don't feel um, that you need any um, outside help. Uh, but um, if help is required, um, I, I suppose that's particularly the case. Uh, well, it, I mean, it could be relate to your home if you've got if there's a family around you. It could relate to, to the work if you've got lots of sort of workmates, colleagues around, in either case, or I suppose it could be some other situation, um, you'll be very good, at, you'll actually be very good at mobilizing people um, around a common goal. 
that, that's something you will be able to do. Um, but you don't have to make a big fuss about it. You don't have to bark orders, um, 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 tell people to get themselves together, tell people they're not working hard enough. No, you have to be, if you're just, just a gentle positivity um, can really help mobilize people. Um, so uh, so that's it, Aquarius. I think that's um, pretty much um, all I want to say. Um, I think it's, it's okay, it's not, I don't think it's a particularly, um, it's a particularly amazing day, but I think it's a day where you can make a uh, solid progress. Pisces. The sun is moving into your star sign. It's the Pisces birthday season. Uh, so, um, I don't know, happy birthday in advance, because uh, sometime maybe you've got a birthday today. Um, uh, like, uh, whose birthday is it today? Well, it would be Prince Andrew's birthday or uh, he would be 64, but I, I don't want to associate you with, you with Prince Andrew. Um, well, unless you are Prince Andrew. Um, but so if you are Prince Andrew, yeah, happy birthday. Um, but yeah, your birthday season is starting and um, you, you're you now starting to feel that you're really in the right place. It's It's this time of year for you. It's the right time of year for you. Um, so, um, I think, uh, it's, it's in, in that respect, today is kind of a new beginning and you're helped by the fact that it's not just that the sun has gone into, moved into your star sign. It's also that the moon, um, is moving into cancer. So the sun and the moon, um, are making this trine aspect. Um, so, you know, both sun and the moon are in water signs. Uh, so yeah, I mean, things are, uh, things are starting to move. I mean, perhaps in quite a gentle way. Um, but, uh, I think that, you know, you can see how things, how things are moving. Um, and in terms of luck, uh, you're helped by the fact that the moon in Cancer in a water sign is making a sextile to Jupiter and Jupiter is your ruling planet. Um, and I, I think this means that, um, you know, you're going to be able to articulate yourself, um, very effectively and you're going to be in the right place at the right time. There's always a place you have to be. Uh, I think you know which place you have to be. Uh, so where do you have to be today? Um, there may be several places you have to be um, because when you're in the right place, it may take, be maybe you have to travel, make a, take a, uh, some small journey in order to get yourself to where you need to get to. Um, and your presence there will be um, decisive, um, very effective. Um, and, you know, you will give the impression that you really are uh, someone who is trustworthy and someone who, yeah, um, is reliable. Um, and uh, in, yeah, in your own way, you can, you know, you can really sort of get people to get things to um, get things to flow. And so... Um, uh, in terms of, you know, social life, other people, you know, you, you don't have to be a wild extrovert. Just um, just be yourself um, and take advantage of your flexibility. You know, you can deal with lots of different people in different ways. You just know how to do it. You don't have to you don't have to make a special effort to turn anything on uh, when you meet someone. You, you can understand what kind of person you're dealing with. You can respond to them appropriately, effectively. Uh, you can be their kind of person. Um, and, you know, things inevitably um, are, are going to move. And you can, you know, you can um, gain for yourself uh, new respect. So under those circumstances, it's not surprising um, that um, from a... Um, 
a relationship perspective, um, uh, things are running smoothly um, without any effort. Um, you don't have to try. Uh, your sort of your natural sense of fun is going to be there. Um, you, you're not going to you're not going to clash. You're not going to conflict with anyone, um, and you, you know your sensitivity will allow you to be yourself. So whether we're talking about um, being with someone who you've known for ages or being with people you've never met before. It's just going to prosper. Um, so, uh, yes, Pisces, uh, make the most of it. Okay, so having looked at the 12 signs, it's now time to look at the I Ching. So, um, as always, um, I ask the question, you know, what is Monday going to be like for uh, those watching the I Ching segment of this video? Um, so the, um, the first hexagram I got was, um, a hexagram, um, hexagram number 31, which is, um, influence. Um, there's a suggestion here that, you know, we can have, um, a, a, quite a powerful influence um, on the world around us, uh, on the people around us. Um, people are going to take us seriously. But if we want to have an influence on the world around us, we have to, we have to ask, where does that influence start? And, of course, that influence starts in ourselves. It, it starts in our own heart, uh, perhaps in our in our own brain. Um, it's it, it is a question of what do we have in mind? What are we thinking about? Um, because we might think that our thoughts and feelings are private, but they're not. Um, the way we we think and feel our, our aims, our ambitions, our desires, what we're trying to achieve, are going to be transparent in terms of the way we act on the world. And people unconsciously are going to pick up on it. So if we have um, uh, bad aims, uh, if we're only thinking about ourselves, if it, if we're totally selfish, um, then we're not going to have so much influence because I think people will pick up on that. Uh, if we want the best for everyone, if we want the best for society, then people will be in tune with that. Uh, so always um, consider consider what your what your aims are. I mean that that is incredibly important. Um, because if you have, if you like, a, 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 a clear heart, um, then, um, then, things, then things are going to work well. And if that is the case also, then we might start to realize that actually uh, the time has come for action. Um, and you know, there's something that needs to move. Something, something has changed. We need to get it get get it going, and um, I, I think there may be an obligation on us to uh, to start to initiate that action. And because this is hexagram thirty one, um, this action may involve other people. So um, the way we get things moving is perhaps through interacting with other people and explaining what needs to be done. And again, if we're if our if our motives are honourable, then I think people are going to listen to us. And we do have a moving line. Uh, the fourth line moves, and so that takes us to a new hexagram. And this hexagram is um, obstruction. Now, on the surface, it's not obviously not such a positive hexagram, um, but. It indicates that yes, we're trying to get something moving, but as we get, as we uh, try to get things moving, 
we we hit a block uh we suddenly find we can't get things done uh, and we might feel that this is a this is a deal breaker that, that suddenly all our all our efforts are for nothing that that's not the approach we need to take um what's happening is that uh we are being um slowed down and we just need to reevaluate what we're doing and probably what's going on is that we don't quite have the resources that we need so remember the previous hexagram was about influence about getting people on board and perhaps we haven't got enough people on board and so we might find that we need extra help so we might need to stop what we're doing get some help get some advice and then we can start to start to move on so obstruct is it's only obstruction it's just a little little bit of a a pothole in the road we need to stop work it out work out what needs to be done um get the help we need and then we can um move forward so i'm going to turn to the um astrology now um or back to the astrology uh in the, the final section and um i want to consider um uh a few people who have um been killed whether by um well or died because we don't really know how Navalny died um but i suppose i want to consider his i want to start by um i want to start by considering um Navalny's death i i mean i suppose people are people are thinking about it and so i've already i mean i have already looked at his i have already looked at his chart and i will put a link to i will put a link to the description of that of what i did um in in um august uh if you want to have another look at it so i don't want to spend ages and ages looking at um Navalny's horoscope um so uh here is uh here is Navalny's chart um yeah i mean i think that you know with Navalny um if i remember rightly what what may have got him into a lot of trouble or upset people was or upset putin was he did that youtube video where he talked about um putin's massive compound supposedly putin's massive compound i don't know whether it's a compound mansion palace and he did this uh, this video it it was a very powerful video um it was kind of quite a mocking um video um and i don't know what when he did it uh it was before the it was obviously before the novichok thing but uh attack but you know he's got a sun, you know he does have this sun venus conjunction in gemini and um he's got his sun opposition neptune um the gemini likes to do that doesn't it i mean gemini can really um tear people to tre- shreds but not in a not in a quite sort of a light-hearted way um gemini can just talk and uh, you know like with that video and perhaps gemini can sometimes talk too much um particularly with his if his with his son in his son in gemini is um opposition um uh opposition neptune in sagittarius uh he might sort of get the wrong impression or think he can get away with things that he can't um and I think yeah with that sun in neptune I think there's plenty of scope for making mistakes um and you could also say uh with that um with that sun in neptune that uh that sun opposition neptune that may be a warning that he needs to watch out for chemicals I mean neptune is Neptune was a is a planet of chemicals. Neptune rules rules poisons um it uh, it, it um rules gas and that kind of thing. So and sun is his 
is his li- is is him that's his life his son in gemini um so you know he has been the victim not you know we had the novichok attack in um when was that uh, 2020 was it uh the novichok attack in 2020 um uh so uh we had that uh previously he he'd been attacked with a corrosive corrosive substance um uh which i think might have i mean i think it's this green stuff that they throw you know, in russia they quite like throwing at people and it's supposed to be some antiseptic but it gets in your eyes and it can cause eye damage um so he's been attacked on at least two occasions with chemicals um and so that might also be how his um how his son neptune opposition um is working um now there are some thick stars that we can't we can't really avoid you know he has got mercury on algol um you know mercury is how he communicates uh mercury is what he says and perhaps what happens because of what he says and so perhaps having mercury on algol um uh he feels uh he feels a sort of certain sort of affinity for um uh, the sort of the darkness in other people and um talking about russia and he what he says yeah causes um causes offense also if you're into hypothetical planets uh he's got his mercury's conjunct hades um hades is obviously the planet of criminality and things that are vile um and so maybe that's through his words that is that is what um what he was attracting incidentally um Karen Silkwood who I talked about very recently who was also potentially a victim of an an attack with substances because remember she was contaminated with plutonium um when she was working at the Kermagee you know there is a view that she was deliberately contaminated and she had and she was mercury she had mercury semi-square hades she was vocally standing out for the workers rights as a union leader and th- that attracted attack so maybe if you're if you've got mercury aspecting hades this hypothetical planet um you can attract um attack um let me just quickly uh show you that um just so you just so you know what i'm talking about just to, you see there if i put the hypothetical planets in you see hades he's got hades at 259 taurus and hades is at, and his mercury is at 25 10 taurus so his hades is actually one minute as- apart from his mercury and of course in navalny's case it's quite unusual a lot of always russians that we look at very often don't have their time of birth or don't have a verified time of birth but for navalny um there is a, there is um a time of birth i mean i that that's one reason why he should people should vote for him you should never vote for vote for a candidate if you don't know their time of birth and uh with navalny um yeah we had a time of birth but anyway unfortunately um he's 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 he died uh, a few days ago um so um those are a few things about his child oh there's another a thick uh, another thick star about is his descendant his descendant is at 28 pisces so um that means that the degree not necessarily the star itself but the degree of the star at skeet is on his seventh house uh seventh house could be one's enemies um and so um his enemies skeet is a is a star of shipwrecks and disasters and so maybe maybe the maybe the skeet on his seventh house cusp um really um isn't isn't helping um in terms of um you know, what was what was going on um in his chart uh, at at the time of his at the time of his death uh well i suppose one should start with the solar return um you know i'm not saying that the solar return is going to be particularly dramatic but 
here's his solar return uh, for June the 4th, 2024, sorry, 2023. So this was a solar return immediately preceding his, his death. Um, I mean, his ascendant, his time of birth is 1.30, was given, uh, I think, at 1.30, uh, is that right? 1.30 p.m. So, you know, his ascendant may not be exactly where, where it is because, you know, one, that's a bit accurate, a bit too, you know, rounded, sounds a bit rounded, that 1.30 time. Um, but, but on his birthday, there is, uh, we just had a full moon, um now full moons in solar returns um are um not so unusual and you can see that this full moon is not exactly it's not exact i mean it's um 8 degrees apart but maybe if you're someone like navalny and you are in a russian prison and you already have health issues and you've got a full moon in your solar return maybe that's not such a good sign um and if you were to take the full moon kind of backwards um i know that the full moon is separating um but in fact it's separating by eight and a half degrees um i think that's eight and a half degrees okay i know it's separating but what if we just take eight and a half as a symbolic measure and just count it so if you take um eight and a half as a symbolic measure then you count from June the 4th and you count months from June the 4th. So you say June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, the 4th, which takes us to late February, which takes us to, you know, takes us to the end of mid, end of February, which is, of course, when he died or died middle, mid, late February. So it may be that that sun moon in his full moon in his solar return chart um, is giving some indication um, of t the timing of when, when he when he died. Um, so that is a possibility. Another thing about the solar return um, is he's got an exact Mercury Uranus conjunction um, in this chart. You know, Mercury keeps coming up with uh, Navalny um, and these things going on in his life. His Mercury on Algol conjunct Hades. I mean, he's in prison. I mean, there's a limit to what he can say when he's in prison. Um, OK, I understand he's got a team working on his behalf, but it's solar return. It's true um, that, that, that you know, he had the Mercury-Uranus Mercury -Uranus conjunction. Um, uh, and somehow that seems to say something about his death. Uh I suppose you could look at his solar return and say, well, he's got um, Virgo in in the eighth house. His eighth house, well, it's intercept. I mean, I don't I don't think interceptions in Placidus have any real meaning. But if you, they don't have any special extra spiritual astrological meaning. But um, from a Placidus point of view, um, Virgo is covered covers his eighth house. I mean. The house systems are starting to break down a bit because it's it's quite far north, fifty six degrees eleven, um, you know, uh, where he was born. But uh, so Mercury potentially rules his eighth house in the solar return, and uh, it's conjunct Uranus, so that might say um, some, something about it. Um, if you want to use whole signs, uh, actually Mercury rules the tenth house, and I suppose Mercury conjunct Uranus. Well, he's He's in the news. He's got everyone's attention, but unfortunately, the reason is because um, is because he's died. Um, then I want to look at his transits. Uh, so the this is the chart for his death. Uh, it's actually set. This is set for Moscow. His chart. So don't ignore the ascendant. He didn't die in Moscow. Um, uh, I just wanted to look at the the. the his his death was announced at 2.19 p.m. Um, Moscow time. Um, so forget the ascendant in the mid heaven. Um, but I just wanted to look at, you know, roughly what was what was happening um, when he died. Uh, I think that uh, main remember remember I was talking about Mercury. So when that death was announced, uh, the moon was at 25.22 Taurus. In other words, the moon was on Algol, 
and the moon was conjunct his Mercury. So the Mercury comes up again. It's also worth noting that Neptune was at 26, 16 um, Pisces, two degrees off his descendant. We don't know exactly when he was born. If he was born a bit earlier, Neptune could have been exactly on his descendant. The seventh house is can be your enemies. Um, uh, open, you know, open enemies maybe, but it's Neptune. Perhaps there's a sort of some, you know, that would, that might indicate if you, that that something happened to him, that it wasn't just natural causes or um, Neptune on the seventh house. Um, that's that's certainly something to speculate on. Now, one thing uh, that is interesting about Navalny's chart is his Mars and his Saturn. Um, so if you look at his Mars and his Saturn, you can see that Navalny has a wide Mars-Saturn conjunction. Um, it's, well, I suppose it's um, about 11 degrees apart. Um, okay, and it's in different signs. <laughs> I mean, Saturn is in Aquarius, uh, Mars is in Leo. So you could say, well, it's, it's miles apart, isn't it? I mean, it's... Um, uh, doesn't mean anything but then you look at the midpoint you know where is his mars saturn midpoint well his mars saturn midpoint is at around five leo so the mars and saturn together they do represent the um death axis potentially the death pair again mars saturn if you're if you're in a russian prison of a long prison you know with a long sentence um you know, it's it's not the safest place to be. Um, so we should perhaps have been looking at that Mars Saturn, that Mars Saturn conjunction. Um, but most importantly, the Mars Saturn midpoint. The Mars Saturn midpoint is about five, five Leo. So the new moon, sorry, the full moon. So on the last new moon, there was a new moon on. Um, January the 25th, sorry, full moon on January the 25th. And that full moon was at 5 degrees 15 minutes Leo. So that full moon was exactly on his uh, Mars-Saturn midpoint. I mean, just to look at where exactly that Mars-Saturn midpoint is. Uh, his Mars-Saturn midpoint... Um, his his, his Mars-Saturn midpoint is at 521 Leo. So uh, that full moon was pretty much exactly on his Mars-Saturn midpoint. And so I think that full moon had a big part um, in his death. I think it was a full moon particularly which signified his death. And we need to remember that in his solar return set for his last birthday, there was a full moon. So we get a kind of double picture with the full moon. Um, so... In retrospect, with 2020 hindsight, maybe we could have seen that uh, he was in in um, danger um, here. Um, finally, I just want to say something about his solar arc directions. Um, I don't. Uh, so his solar arc directions. Um, these are his solar arc directions um, for. Um, uh, you know, that means I'm, he's 47 years old, so I'm counting. Uh, everything is moving 47 degrees. Um, so uh, there is the uh, there's the solar arc direction. So his solar arc directed south node uh, is on his midheaven. So his, south, his solar arc directed south node was exactly on his midheaven um, when he died. Um, and so the solar arc directed north node was exactly on his IC. Uh, I'm not saying that that in itself is automatically symbolic of death, but the north node, I suppose you could say the IC is the end of the matter. His destiny was to, you know, the, four, uh, the IC on the north node, solar arc on his IC is, of course, we where his where his ascendant IC, uh, MCIC does does depend on his time of birth, but maybe the North Node is saying that the right thing for him, in terms of his overall destiny, if you take a view of incarnation, moving from one place to another, it was time for him perhaps to 
exit the scene and move on to something else maybe i mean um i don't know if you want to look at it from a karmic point of view um mars directed mars was moving towards the conjunction of his ascendant um if his if his ascendant had been say two degrees earlier 26 virgo that would of course have meant that neptune transiting neptune was exactly on his eyes on his descendant and it would also have meant that solar arc, solar arc directed mars was also was also exactly on his ascendant i mean mars on your ascendant represents an attack so i suppose but you know that not the poisoning attack but perhaps we you know something to do with his death i don't know um but that's interesting and maybe there's a hint there perhaps that he was born a bit earlier um uh i don't know how whether that would be possible but that that is um something to consider um the additionally if you look at his his solar arc directed sun now remember he's got a sun neptune opposition so the solar arc directed sun neptune opposition was moving on to his saturn uh and that would have technically happened in a a few months time but uh uh maybe you know that had something to do it so overall looking looking at the solar arc directions looking at the prenatal um uh sorry uh, looking at the solar return um and some of the transits i think there was enough there to suggest that yeah he was in danger of course i wasn't looking at it and it is of course with um 2020 hindsight um so let's let's look at uh, someone else um who um uh who was killed who was killed in a really very strange circumstances and this is um Alexander Litvinenko now if you go to the wikipedia page of uh, Alexander Litvinenko remember he was he was an agent of the FSB who who eventually defected to the west and in when he was in the west in in, particularly in the uk i think he became a british citizen uh he was constantly criticizing uh, the russian regime he was making very very serious allegations about putin uh he was just running around all over the place he was meeting people He, he seemed to have no regard for his security and if you are in that kind of situation um I, given what happens to people like that that that's not how you behave i i, I mean uh he was just taking a huge risk um uh, and they don't take you know the fsb and its success previous organizations the kgb and the nkvd before that when people behave like that they they go get you that's what happens um i wonder why he was so reckless um uh i suppose you could say it's because he was a sagittarius um um maybe uh also um uh alexander litvinenko oh sorry i should say one thing about his birthday if you go to wikipedia page it says or something i think it says something like august the 31st or december the 4th um now there is a picture of his grave he was buried in highgate I think I think he's buried in Highgate Cemetery. Uh you should go to Highgate Cemetery. It's a great great I mean I don't it's more difficult to get into than it used to be but it's a great cemetery. Um one of my favorite definitely my favorite cemetery brilliant place uh, if you get the chance. Um uh and I I think he's buried in Highgate Cemetery. I'm not absolutely sure about that. Um uh, but it definitely says December the 4th. So I'm assuming he's born on December the 4th if I'm wrong I'm sorry. uh but uh, his grave definitely says december the 4th if you look up if you go to astro.com um this is a, that that's is a chart it gives um so why is he so reckless well his recklessness kind of reminds me of someone else's recklessness with gonzalo lira i mean gonzalo gonzalo lira um was um he was a person who was in in Kharkiv criticizing the Ukrainians and being sympathetic to the Russians and he got um arrested um 
and he, ba- as far as I can see, he basically died by neglect. So that's why, you know, when you talk about what happened to Navalny, you don't. You should also be talking about what happened to Gonzalo Lira. Um, uh, maybe you know, both of them were killed by neglect. I don't know. Um, but um, the reason I mention um, Gonzalo Lira uh, when I'm talking about Alexander, Lit- Alexander Litvinenko is that. Um, Alexander Litvinenko has no traditional planets in Earth signs. Okay, he's got Uranus and Pluto in Earth signs. There's a certain lack of grounding there. Um, he, 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 you know, he was not under. He was not. Alexander Litvinenko was not um, was just not being careful. He was just he was just being a free spirit, saying what he wanted, doing what he wanted, meeting who he wanted, um, and. I think that lack of earth may be telling, and if you if you go to Gonzalo Lira's chart, I don't have a time of birth for Gonzalo Lira. You can see that Gonzalo Lira likewise doesn't didn't have any planets in Earth. I mean, Gonzalo Lira would be was chain smoking through his in often through his vlogs, um, being in Kharkiv in in the middle sort of if you like in the middle of enemy territory, you know. He was taking a huge risk. Um, and so that kind of reminded me of Litvinenko. And this is the only reference. I'm just going to mention, this is the only time I'm going to show Gonzalo Lira's chart. But I just wanted to look at his chart with reference to um, the lack of earth of um, Alexander Litvinenko. Um, now, when I was thinking about Litvinenko's chart, um well, firstly, he's born on December the 4th. Uh, interesting that um, um, Alexei Navalny was born on um, June the 4th. Um, so they were born, they're of different years, but they were born sort of six months apart. Uh, interesting that four comes up. Um, but the one thing I did find interesting about Alexander Litvinenko's chart, um, you know, when I, was, when I was going to look at his chart, looking at his midpoints, I asked myself, what midpoint would I expect to see in Alexander Litvinenko's chart? Remembering how he died. Just to remember, he met some people who just, I think they'd come in from Moscow. He met them for tea in London, I think. And they put um, polonium-210 in, uh, in his tea. I think they said he actually 10 micrograms of polonium-210. Now, that is a huge dose. It's a massive dose. Um, of polonium-210 and so he drank the tea he was sick that day and his body was completely destroyed um, polonium it, it's a very Neptune thing because um, it, because polonium-210 doesn't give off um, it doesn't give off gamma rays and so usually when you detect radiation you you've start with the gamma rays the alpha, with alpha radiation you have to be right up close to actually find it um, and they had, you know, so they couldn't, re- they, they didn't read any radiation because there was, no, because they didn't have the, because the, 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 the and the spectrometry, spectrometry they were using was not designed to detect um, uh, um, alpha radiation. Uh, it was only when they sent his results to the Atomic Energy Authority that there was this uh, gamma, there was a gamma spike, which it was, it was flat, they didn't see anything, but there was this one spike and someone who'd worked, I think, on atomic weapons or something beforehand um, had seen it before with relation to, to plutonium. So it was, a, but sorry, with, with relationship to polonium, I think. I think that was the story. Um, and so it was, it, it was very kind of weird. And so, yeah, I said, what would I expect? Well, I said I would have expected Neptune to be on his Mars-Saturn midpoint. Mars-Saturn is, is about death. And... Um, uh, yeah mars saturn is about death and his the nature of his death would very much seem to be um quite um quite neptunian um i would have i would have said um and uh his so looking at his um looking at his mars looking at his um his 
his Neptune tree, his Mars Saturn, you can see Neptune, I don't know if you can see that, but Neptune is exactly conjunct his Mars Saturn midpoint. Um, so there's Mars, uh, there's Saturn, and there's Neptune exactly, exactly opposition, um, which is kind of what I expected. I don't have his time of birth. It doesn't look as if Neptune's in the eighth, but it's not. I don't. I don't have his um, time of birth. Finally, I wanted to look at the chart of Georgi Markov, the Bulgarian dissident. Uh, his death became famous, infamous, because he was killed with an umbrella. Uh, the view is that it was done by a sort of Bulgarian secret a Bulgarian agent, possibly Bulgarian. I don't know. Uh, so he was stabbed, and he felt something on his, I think, on his shin, and a little tiny ball went, was injected into his leg, um, and um, it, it broke down and released his poison um, ricine. And you know, he was working for the um, BBC World Service, I think, for their Bulgarian section. Um, so I do not have a time of birth for Georgi Markov, um, but uh, Georgi Markov. Um, Georgi Markov was a was a Pisces, um, and uh, you can see that uh, there is. Uh, but he's got a Mars Saturn opposition. Um, you know that that Mars Saturn opposition is uh, you know it's it's. I mean, a lot of people have Mars Saturn oppositions. Um, Saturn at twenty nine Sagittarius, Mars at twenty six Gemini. In a in a sense, that's not such such an amazing thing. But I suppose as soon as you defect from a so a, a communist country, and as soon as you start working for um, the Bulgarian section of um, the BBC World Service, maybe you're starting to become a target and maybe that Mars Saturn opposition comes into play. Um, so his Mars Saturn midpoint um, was at... Um, his own Mars Saturn midpoint was, is, was at around 28... Well, 13... Um, 13 was at thirteen thirty fixed, so you can see that he has. Um, uh, it looks as if yeah, he's got Mercury on his Mars Saturn midpoint. So um, if you've got Mercury on your Mars Saturn midpoint, um, you. Um, I mean, there is his. Uh, the Mercury's got Mercury on his Mars Saturn midpoint. So you could say that he was working, he didn't just work for the BBC, I think, uh, but he was communicating in Bulgaria. So it's, it's Mercury that kind of got him killed, you could argue. Um, so he's got Mercury on the Mars Saturn midpoint. Mer Mer Mercury at 13, uh, well, we don't know exactly when he's born, um, but he was born on March 1st, he just went for Sofia, Bulgaria. Um, so that's what got him killed. So then we look at uh, the actual time. Not I've got, I haven't gone for the death. I've gone for the attack. Um, so the attack on um, uh, the attack on Georgi Markov, um, which was um, on September the seventh, nineteen. I think it was September the seventh, nineteen seventy-eight. Um, and you can see that Uranus was exactly, was exactly, so let's just, so there is his, uh, Uranus was exactly square his Mercury. So Uranus was, was, was on his Mars Saturn midpoint. So Uranus was um, the attack. It was this sudden death. Um, uh, not sudden deck, but the sudden attack. So Uranus on his Mercury, uh, that was the time of the umbrella attack, and that was um, uh, 
I mean, it wouldn't have had to have necessarily been on that day. Uh, Uranus was around at that time, which was the attack and his death. And furthermore, at the time of the attack, Uranus was on the Mars-Saturn midpoint in the sky. Uh, so there is, um, uh, there's his Mars, there's his Saturn. And so I think... So Uranus was making a semi-square to his Mars-Saturn midpoint. So we kind of get a double a double theme. There was a Mars-Saturn midpoint when he was born. Um, so uh, uh, Uranus was on... Sorry, Mercury... Let's say it again. The, the transiting Mars-Saturn midpoint was making a hard aspect to his natal Mars-Saturn midpoint. And transiting Uranus was square his Mercury and he had Mercury on his natal Mars, Mars Saturn midpoint and uh, that was what's going on when he had this uh, this fatal umbrella attack. Okay, that is, that's all I'm going to say. Um, I'm, obviously, I'm sorry that uh, Alexei Navalny has died I and mean, we don't exactly know what happened. Um, uh, maybe we'll never know uh, uh, exactly why he died or how, wh why he died when he died but um, I think from an astrological point of view um, I, I think there was enough going on um, to sort of indicate uh, that he his life was in danger and yeah, I thought it was interesting to look at a few other people um, in particular Georgi Markov and um, um, a um, Alexander Lit Litvinenko so thank you very much for listening. Um, if you enjoyed this video, I would be grateful if you were to like it. If you're not subscribed and you enjoyed the video, I'd be grateful if you were to subscribe. And if you want to buy me a coffee, there is a link in the description. So thanks again for listening and I will talk to you again tomorrow.